good day to all we are in the second lecture for the for understanding tensile testing of textiles in this we will try to understand stress strain curve which is very important not only for uh, textile quality evaluation but for many other uh, understanding this is a base so let us look into the topic so stress strain curve uh, of various fibers initial modulus secant modulus what is yield point uh, what is the effect of various uh, uh, parameters on stress strain curves and a few browsed uh, stress strain curves of various fibers you can look into in this in this lecture in tensile test the sample with a maybe fiber yarn or fabric is held between two jaws in any of the tensile testing machines available uh, in between these two jaws the black color is the fiber and the force is applied along the axial direction when you apply force like this you the specimen breaks so this is how the test is done now let us uh, see how a stress strain graph is generated now let us try to understand stress strain curve We have y axis and x axis. On the y axis, it is stress or specific stress, and the unit is gram per tex, or uh, it may be gram per denier, centinewton per tex, centinewton per denier on the y axis. And on the x axis, it is strain percentage. Now, let us see a typical stress strain curve. So the first portion will be like this and the next portion may be like this. It is not uh, uh, the same for all. Uh, a typical curve is taken for understanding the various terminologies. So the red color is the stress strain curve that was obtained after a tensile test on application of load. And the uh, for various, uh, by increasing the load, the strain was obtained and the readings are noted here. So with this curve, uh, we will try to understand first the breaking point. The this one, this one is the breaking point, and from that we can know the breaking stress with and the breaking strain. The breaking stress is the tenacity or specific stress at break is called as tenacity. And now we will try to understand initial modulus. For which we have to draw a, uh, uh, a line with the slope from the origin. So I am trying to draw a line from the origin point. So this makes an angle theta with the uh, x axis. So this is the initial region of the stress strain curve and the initial region makes an angle of theta with the um, x axis from this we can understand what is the initial modulus this is called a hookian region where your stress and strain are proportional so till this portion you have the stress and strain proportional the hookian region this is the um, yield point and now from that we draw two lines one to the x-axis and the other to the y-axis at two different points a and from a it is a a dash to the um, y-axis and a double dash to the x-axis so a a dash a dash will be the strain and a double dash will be the stress similarly at point b it is b b dash is the strain and b double dash is the stress so uh, i have also marked the angle theta which the initial region makes with the x axis so now let us try to see what is initial modulus initial modulus is tan tan theta which is tan theta which is a double dash divided by a dash that is stress divided by the strain 
uh, at any portion it will be the same b double dash divided by b dash so this is your initial modulus from this is a very important term uh, how your b material behaves initially uh, in any particular application very important in te technical textiles now let us try to understand secant modulus so secant modulus is maybe at any point on the curve yes which is ss dash s double dash by ss dash any point you can take so like this any point you can take the green color spot or any spot or at any point on the curve yes you can take which is secant modulus yes s s is dash is the strain s s double dash is the stress so secant modulus is s s dash yeah, i'm sorry yes the s double dash divided by s s dash so this is how you can get the modulus at any other point which is called the secant modulus the initial region we get the initial modulus and some other point we at any point on the curve we can get the secant modulus so now we have understood what is breaking point what is tenacity how a stress strain curve looks like how what is the hookian region what is the initial modulus which is tan theta a a dash divided by a a double da, a a double dash divided by a a dash which is tan theta or b b double dash divided by b b dash and also secant theta on at any point on the curve which is s s double dash divided by s s dash let us try to understand yield point from this curve so yield point is the point after which there is a drastic change in the slope of the stress strain curve like in this we can see there is a slope here which we have already seen the initial modulus the tan theta this is the slope and now there is a change in the slope and this point may be called as yield point there are many other methods for determining yield point like uh, there you may have an offset from this region and there you can have some a, a slope line parallel to this same stress strain curve may be taken and that may be taken as yield point so another method for uh, uh, some offset method or change in slope threshold level uh, so the first one which i told is uh, the uh, there is for the initial this uh, is only a fraction of the uh, tan uh, theta so this may be taken as yield point or this point an offset may be taken or when the slope becomes zero say in some curves this uh, there is the, the, the i will change the curve and draw the curve may change and become like this so this point will become your uh, in this point the slope is zero so that may be also taken as yield point so any of these methods according to the type of the curve uh, you can find the yield point the importance of yield point is that till the yield point you can tell you may not assure but you can tell it has a, an elastic region and your uh, stress strain may be recoverable so it, it is not totally recoverable in textile materials it is uh, it can be told that before the yield point the strain is recoverable and after the yield point it is called as plastic region it is not a very clear demarcation again in textiles so not truly elastic even till the yield point so this is the importance of yield point now let us try to understand the term work of rupture so in a, in a, a stress strain curve you have the area under the stress strain curve so this is the area uh, 
we are closing it. So this blue color is the area under the stress strain curve. So you can write as work of rupture is the area under stress strain curve. So in the formula you have integration 0 to L which is the break point. The FDL force this is given as force and this is given as uh, if this is given as length. So it is uh, integral integral integration of F integration of 0 to L F dl we have already seen the formula so work of rupture is 0 to l this is your l point and 0 to l fdl is the your work of rupture so this is important when the impact strength of a material is considered so higher the work of rupture better will be the impact strength of a material now let us look into three stress strain curves to find the effect of uh, uh, drawing on and orientation in a synthetic fiber uh, for example polyester. So we have uh, three stress strain curves. You can see three stress strain curves one, two and three. Can you find out which would be the uh, stress strain curve of the of a fully drawn yarn so i hope you have already learned man made fibers drawing of polyester and in the uh, textile fibers also you, you would have uh, studied on various fibers and stress strain curves can you identify which one brown green or blue yes it is the brown one is fully drawn yarn. Fully drawn yarn will be very highly oriented and more crystalline. So it will uh, it can withstand high amount of stress for a very low strain volumes. Then can you tell which is partially oriented and low oriented yarn? Very low orientation. Yes, green one is partially oriented yarn. Poi and LOY for low oriented yarn this is uh, for a uh, uh, typical curves for polyester five uh, polyester this is for a polyester fiber which i have shown so uh, a partially oriented yarns will have a uh, little higher stress compared to your low oriented yarn and the low orientation what is that orientation orientation of polymers in the, in the fiber structure so that has an influence on your uh, i told molecular arrangement in the introduction is a, a thing which influences your stress strain curve so this uh, these are uh, typical uh, stress strain curves for uh, polyester it may, may, may not exactly match so the, the now let us try to understand three typical stress strain curves for uh, uh, understanding the effect of a twist. So we have drawn three different curves. So can you tell uh, what is the effect of initial modulus? Yes, the initial modulus for which which will have a higher TM. So which will have higher TM? TM. Let us consider TM1, 2 and 3. So which is the highest TM? Yes, TM1 will be greater than TM2 will be greater than TM3 with regard to initial modulus. But with regard to uh, breaking strength, which will have, which will be higher, this may not. But if we increase uh, uh, the TM, uh, there, there is wide range of differences in the, in the twist multiplier between TM1, 2 and 3. Then the graph will be actually like this. If you further go on increasing the TM, then the strength will decrease with respect to breaking strength. The initial modulus may be higher with higher whenever you go for a higher a TM. But tw TM is a twist multiplier, uh, the angle or the made with the central axis so 
the breaking strength actually will decrease if you go on further increase the twist multiplier due to obliquity you will better understand this when you learn the uh, effect of twist on staple fibers this is with regard to staple fiber yarn so if you increase the twist the uh, Initial modulus goes on increasing, but with regard to breaking strength, your breaking strength will decrease if you increase after a certain point of time. Now, let us look into the various stress strain curves of various fibers. I am Google searching stress strain curve for textile fibers, and in images, we can see, see, we can we have the textile fibers in the design bridge website we have this textile stress strain curves they have given the stress strain curves for various fibers so you can see cotton polypropylene polypropylene filament staple the half breaking point is higher than cotton but the initial modulus is slightly lower then you can see myelon has good elongation acrylic uh, strength is lower than even cotton in this figure. Nylon has strength slightly higher than cotton but has very high elongation than cotton. Polyester staple is uh, slightly having lesser strength than uh, nylon staple. Almost e they have shown it here equal to that of uh, uh, cotton but uh, its uh, elongation strain is uh, almost nearly 45 percentage cotton is less than 10 percentage you have uh, polypropylene you can see polypropylene staple film uh, polypropylene filament staple fiber two types of staple fiber has been shown so uh, as synthetic fibers can be produced at different um, strength requirements and wool you can see very high elongation and of more than 40 percentage this is how you have to look at stress strain curves we'll see some other stress strain curves so i'm going down we can see in this we have so you can see the stress strain curves so we have i'm browsing and i want you to browse see it is very important so they have given for fiberglass They have shown for various fibers. You can see the difference between silk and wool. Silk has uh, stress gram per denier so around four to five and the and the strain percentage of nearly 20 whereas wool you have 30 more than 30 but the gram per denier is lower so orlon is an acrylic staple fiber you can see it is uh, blended usually with uh, wool acrylic so see you you have slightly higher values but still more elongation so rayon filament has lower strain as well as strength strain and stress so let us go to nylon you can see nylon is uh, cotton here it is here so dacron so cotton two varieties are given one slow slightly lower and the other higher so they have shown nylon and other fibers in this website you can go to something else and also see and compare so they have given some technical textile fibers in this website you can see so in this you can see the stress strain curves of uh, some i will show some technical fibers see you have they have shown some technical fibers here it is loading this is very important in uh, composites development so these fibers are usually used in composites where stress strain curves very important you have see you can see carbon fibers kevlar s glass e glass fibers these are fibers used in composites 
So, so with this I stop.